hooked up. That's what I'm talking about right there. Pulling spinners, catches fish. We're doing a video. We're doing the video, okay? You have to look like you're a good boy for the video. What is going on guys today? We are back with another video. It is me and Surly out here tonight. We've been catching some walleyes and actually I've been out for pretty much the entire day today. Fishing by no means, look how it looks right now. Um, it probably doesn't look like it's 85 degrees, but 85 degrees, flat, calm, sunny, all day long. Kind of your classic tough summer walleye fishing conditions. And um, it's been kind of a grind, but we've been catching some nice fish and uh, it hasn't really been as bad as I probably just made it sound. We've been catching a bunch of fish um, on spinner rigs and we've already filmed just a ton of videos on spinner rigs, but most of the ones it's like spinner rig title and then where the fish are. And that's kind of how far we get into the spinner rig fishing. But spinners catch fish everywhere you're gonna go in walleye country, whether you're on a shallow flowage system, whether you're on a, body, a river system, um, whether you're on a deep, clear, natural body of water. And you can fish them in three feet of water. You can fish them in 35 feet of water on the bottom. You can stick them 20 feet down over 100 feet of water and catch walleyes. They work everywhere. You can put a leech on them. You can put a plastic on them. You can put a crawler on them one of the most versatile and effective walleye fishing presentations and definitely one of those things where if you take pulling spinners out of the midsummer dog days walleye fishing equation um, i would be lost because it really is just kind of a standby and today we're going to go all into the specifics on pulling spinners um, you know how you can set your rods up um, you know the different types of blades on there and how that's effective running slow death hooks running tandem crawler harnesses running plastics running leeches a little bit of everything we're going to go into a lot of that stuff and kind of break it down on how i look at it and where i use kind of each thing as a tool surly already wants to go home we gotta we gotta get done doing the video so we've already caught a bunch of the fish and uh, we'll throw some fish catches in the mix too we've caught some nice fish today shelbster caught one that was just a toad um, while she was out for a little bit today but stay tuned let's catch some fish on spinners go all into the specifics on how you guys can pull spinners and be really super productive uh, for kind of the remainder of the summertime period here because summertime is spinner time a lot of places you're going to go in walleye walleye country so stay tuned let's get it going on we'll catch a few fish hooked up fish on another one right there that is what i'm talking about pulling spinners. We just had this guy in this boat right here pull up literally within 10 feet of us. But that's all right. The bait's got to be moving to catch him and he's probably just going to slip bobber or something. It's like a decent walleye, Shelby. Gonna net him for me? Yep. Oh yeah, decent fish, decent fish. We're just going to catch this fish and literally leave this spot because we got other spots we can catch him than this. Or we just got to do circles around one guy who pulled up right in the middle of the zone. Here. <laughs> oh man, guy. he's an angry guy, isn't he? <laughs> nice chunky 19 incher on a slow death hook there. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Catching them. And on days like this, um, you got to have almost some kind of moving presentation, whether that's a slow death or a spinner or something like that, where you just have no action going on really on anything else. And there we go. Nice midday walleye up here in northern Wisconsin. We'll let that guy go and hopefully do it over and over. What do you think, Shelby? Yep. There we go. Healthy little guys. Hooked up. Dude, what is that? It's gotta be a big walleye, right? I hope. Not, gonna, feel like a bass. not gonna lie, I was sitting on my phone. We just came off a little rock spine, right? I didn't see any fish. I wasn't assuming much was gonna happen, but one must have snuck through the cracks, I would assume, huh? Yeah. Is it a walleye? I get my net. Yeah, it's a nice one. Oh, dude, a really nice walleye. Really nice walleye. Look at that. That's a good one. That's a really nice walleye. I realize my front camera shut off there, huh? Cool. You probably Dang. haven't caught one that big in a while, huh? No, not definitely not around here. Well, that's a pretty good one. That's a great one. It'd be nice if we could catch a bunch more like that, huh? Yeah, he's got a fin clip too, a survey fish from the spring. Oh my gosh, walleye and spinners. This thing is beautiful. I haven't caught one this nice in a long time up in Hayward. That's a stud. A Let's take a quick picture. Yes. There he goes, there he goes. Nice and healthy. Yep. Very, very important. Yes it is. To keep letting these bigger fish go. 
Um, there's three rods that I'll use a lot for pulling spinners and uh, a lot of my trolling applications in general. The number one, and these are all the 2B fishing. They're made by the same guys who make Elliott, so you know they're just awesome rods. So I'm not going to go into the, how much I like these very much, but what I use them for more. So 2B fishing Genesis trolling rods. This is the 8 foot 6. It's a telescopic rod. This is probably the most um, commonly used one. And of course, like a typical bottom balancer, it's all spun up up there. Um, but it, it folds down so you can get it you know, into your rod locker and things like that. And uh, this is the most common one I use. I generally use this a lot for running my planer boards on. It's a great board rod. You can also use it as a down rod. Uh, but this is the number one one that I use the most time. Now, if I'm running a big planer board spread, most of the time I'll have several of these rods out. And then one of my favorite, most underutilized trolling rods is the five foot three inside rod. This is a very short one. It's kind of designed for the lead core, which it's great for. It's also a nice inside rod. What I mean by inside rod is planer board rod, planer board rod, and then your inside rod goes right here, generally down. You can put a board on it too, but generally I run this one just as a down rod. And uh, it's nice because it keeps everything real clean, keeps it on the inside of your spread and things like that. Now the other rod, which I've actually come to love and hated it the first time I ever used it. <laughs> it's a great rod. It was just, I, I'd never used something like this. And this is an 11 and a half foot um, rod, much longer rod, really loads up well. And where I use this a lot of the times, on some of the recent videos we filmed is where like I'm running a really tight break line. So like for example, I'll put this out and that's 11 and a half feet off the side of the boat. Then I'll take and I'll put a five foot three like this right here in this rod holder. So now I'm stacking two rods per side very tight and I can run them super clean. I'll do that on both sides and I got four spinner rigs right back behind me so I can run a lot of really tight breaks, really tight weed edges, pieces of structure like that. So that's kind of my, my the rods that I use and the different things that I use them for for the most part. And uh, you know, like I said, you can do spinners a hundred different ways. So sometimes you might be pulling them on boards, sometimes you might be using them as down rods. And uh, you know, if you're fishing in a state where it's just one line, you know, generally I'd just be using the standard 8.6 because um, it's just a great, you know, kind of all around length rod. Feels like it should be another decent one. Not quite as big, but we'll take them all today. Being real quiet, cause there's boats all around me. There we go. Another decent walleye. It's actually the smallest one I've caught out here this afternoon. But uh, flat. Flat, flat, calm out. Come here, buddy. That one actually came on a slow death, and a lot of times when things are just super, super, kind of, you know, flat, calm, and just stealthy out like this, going down to just something super simple, like a real small smiley blade and a slow death, is a lot of times the key to kind of getting more bites. A little bit smaller presentation, a lot of times it's easier to get fish to eat small stuff than it is for to get fish to eat big stuff. And we're just kind of doing a little kind of preliminary scouting out here this afternoon, but getting a few fish anyways. That was that little combo right there. Real small little butterfly, and then a slow death hook and just a half a crawler on there. Got the job done on that one. fish on right there. This feels like it is going to be a good one. I gotta tell Mitchell that it's gonna be a minute, she big. All right, 27 feet out here. Bait was about 24 down. It's working a big flat section of water. And uh, I got one my rigs on here with a slow death hook and that little butterfly and that one just seems to be the deal so it's time to switch some others over to that nice and slow when you're by yourself I'm 
got 70 feet back right now. Oh, feels like a real solid fish. I mean, he's going for a run right now. Oh boy. You ready, buddy? Are you ready? Are you ready to catch him? It's a good one, Surly. He is real lively. This is where they come off on spinners, right next to the boat. This is gonna be a good one, buddy. little walleye here. And there we go. Just like that. It is 100% time to switch up to some more butterflies and slow deaths. That seems to be the deal over kind of that big thumpy Colorado blade today. Come here buddy. Look at that. He's already off in the bag. Beautiful walleye right there. That is exactly, exactly what we're after. Nice, thick, stocky fish out here on some of these deeper flats, getting them on the spinners. There he goes. Now the part everybody's been waiting for, blades. There's a million different types of spinner blades. Generally, I carry a big box full of a whole different kinds of blades, different colors, things like that. Um, we're not gonna get too into colors because that's just up in the air every day, right? But it kind of as a standard rule of thumb, I like a lot of chromes, a lot of blues, um, a lot of purples when I'm in clear water. Dirty water, your fire tigers, your oranges, a lot of that brighter type stuff, right? Of course, there's always exceptions to that, but that's kind of um, where I generally start the day at anyways. Now, as far as blades go, you know, there's a lot of different types of stuff as far as you know what's going on with blades and we just have a total mess of different spinner rigs laying it around in my boat um, you got some of your like bigger colorado thumper style blades right those are going to be the hardest knocking blade you can fish you know this is a bigger one here and they're going to knock real hard and it's going to kind of draw the most attention it's going to be a lot thumpier you're going to have to hold more speed to get it to turn um, and it's a lot more aggressive so a lot of times i'm trolling open water or stained water or I think fish are aggressive I'll start out with a big blade like that anytime you want you know fish are in a very positive mood um, generally the number one thing you want to do is just attract them you know once they see it and they're attracted to it then boom you know fish on now going down from there <clears throat> you know you have plenty of smaller Colorado style blades I'm sure we got something on a rod here um, something that looks more like this here and this is kind of like almost a little bit more of like an Indiana blade here but uh, you know, kind of your standard one that comes on a lot of the Northland ones, things like that. And uh, you know, that's kind of a pretty standard operating procedure there. And probably most people that are trolling spinners are using a blade size or something like that. And uh, you know, that's kind of right in there. Again, it's thumpy. You got to hold a little bit more speed to get it to go. And uh, you know, it's a, it's it's a relatively has a lot of attracting quality to it because that thing's just going around and knocking a lot. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, you have something that's called a butterfly blade, which looks something like this right here and we'll take this crawler off of here for a second and um, these come in mu multiple sizes as well this is kind of like a smaller size butterfly blade right here now butterfly blade there's no clevis it just goes around and it spins just like that as water hits it you can pull them at a very very slow speed is kind of the advantage to them and uh, a similar thing would be something called a smiley blade is what i've always called it anyways and that looks something like this right here it's not that hard plastic it's more of like a flexible material um, but it, it's kind of like a butterfly blade in its shape again no clevis it just goes through the water and uh, you know spins spins around like that obviously you can pull it very very slow as well so these are kind of the main blades that I use of course there's just a hundred different kinds of other stuff um, you got like a wing nut type of blade 
there's just a lot going on with blades, right? Um, but to keep it simple, th that, that butterfly blade is a lot more of a stealthy approach. It has a lot less of that big, huge, calling, thumpy, thumpy to it. Um, it's much more of just a, a slow moving. You can pull, like I said, you can pull it really slow and it's always gonna spin, whether it's falling, coming up, going down. Um, it just pulls very nice at a slow speed. So as far as blades go, you know, that's kind of how I like to break it down in the two main ones I use quite a bit. And, uh, you know, the other, the other thing we can talk about here is, is hooking, you know, different hooking strategies, right? How are you hooking that crawler on? So the two different kinds, you know, is generally a tandem one um, or a single hook or a slow death hook. And a tandem one is, you know, you definitely be, would be running a whole crawler on a tandem rig. And that would have like two octopus hooks, generally number fours um, or number two is sometime. And that would be a rig that looks a little bit more like this right here. Here's a bigger butterfly one um, with two larger octopus hooks on it. And like I said, you know, generally you're running a whole crawler on this kind of setup. Now, when do I go down to just one octopus hook? Anytime I'm running a leech on there, I go down to just one octopus hook and that normally works pretty well. Um, generally, I don't like to run two octopus hooks on my leech rigs. Leech is generally a lot smaller than a crawler. Obviously, it's only about that long and uh, you don't need two hooks on there. So, and uh, you know, a lot of times if I'm fishing way up in the weeds, I'll go down to just a one hooked rig. And the reason for that being, um, especially on my leech, is that, uh, you know, those leeches are real resilient. And bluegills can really tap on them, perch can tap on them hard, and they don't come off. Now, if they do that to a crawler, the crawler's gone the first time a bluegill grabs it. But leeches will stay on a lot better and you can run one hook because of that. Now the other hooking option, um, which is kind of its own presentation in itself, is a slow death hook. Now a slow death hook for anybody that's not familiar with it is one of these bent up looking hooks like this. Um, pretty, a bunch of different hook companies make them. Very strange design. Some of them will even have a little swivel here that's connected to it called like a super slow death hook or you know, I think something like that. It doesn't really matter what the name is, but what a slow death hook is, like I said, it's got that kink in the hook. You thread it on, it's just a big single hook. You thread the crawler on, and generally I like to push that crawler up past the eye of the hook like that so it stays on there real good. Now this goes through the water real lopsided and weird, so it's constantly spinning it and it gives the crawler itself a lot of action. Now when fish are really skittish, really spooky, really negative, you can just go down to running this, no blades on it, and you're gonna be effective doing that. That's kind of like the last resort in my mind a lot of times. Otherwise, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll run a smiley blade or a butterfly blade on there like I am tonight. And this kind of, these smiley blades, um, they almost like put pressure down on here and they spin up a little bit so you have this this worm that's doing a lot of rotating plus the blade making it really rotate so even though that's a very small presentation it really has a lot of movement at a slow speed and like today when fish are really negative and really neutral that was absolutely the key and most of the time I'll run like a half crawler three quarter inch crawler something like that on there and that normally is a super effective way um, to catch a lot of these finicky fish on these dog day summer days up right there <laughs> well I switched the butterfly blades out and this one's just still getting popped sometimes you just it's just the way it goes I guess right same rods just catching all the fish sun angles horrible probably maybe if I stand right in front of it it'll kind of make a cool little backdrop how's that does that look any better 85 back on one ounces here for all you guys who always comment, how far back do you go? Well, you go however far back you have to go down to catch the fish. In this particular circumstance, 85 feet on a one ounce piece of lead. Surly, we gotta teach you how to take the boards off, buddy. We gotta teach you how to take the boards off. Location, just kind of a big, there's it's just a big flat out here in the middle of the lake. A real deep transition that kind of comes up from mud and just kind of meets a hard bottom flat. A little bit of rock, mostly just sand. Really nice area to troll, not too snaggy. Everything runs real clean. Come here, buddy. And again, slow death, tiny butterfly blade, half a crawler. Mostly open water trolling I do is uh, mostly uh, 
with bigger blades, but oh yeah, there's another really nice fish here. Look at that guy down there. I love fishing clear water. There we go. Another nice walleye right there. We're getting it done, Surly. We are absolutely getting it done. I'm liking it. We'll get him off, show you guys, give you guys a quick look at him here. Oh, he's all angry here. All sorts of angry. Just hooked right in the corner. There we go. Most of the time those slow death hooks, you get them pretty good because they're a lot bigger hook than kind of your standard crawler harness rig. There we go. Beautiful walleye as the sun's going down. That's what I'm talking about right there. Pulling spinners, catches fish everywhere you're going to go in the middle of summer almost. And uh, there's a lot of little things that kind of lead to catching more fish than the guy next to you. And kind of dialing it in a lot of days is kind of the key. You know, between just catching a few fish, catching a whole bunch of summer walleyes on crawler harnesses and your spinner rigs. Let's let that guy go. See you later, buddy. Thanks for playing. There he goes, back down. What do you think, Surly? What do you think? You did so good. You're doing so good today. I know, it's really hot out for Surly. We keep throwing them in the water, letting them swim, but you're doing good. You're a good boat boy. Now weights, what kind of weights are we using and how are we running them? They're, like I said, you know, spinners are one of those things, they're so versatile, there's a number of different ways you can fish them. Most of the time I'm fishing them on a bottom bouncer and I fish a lot of one ounces. Um, I just, a lot of times I just know the curve so well and I know when I slack them up, how far they're going down and things like that. Two ounces are also super common. If you're fishing in like heavy current in a river, you might go up to like a three ounce or sometimes. Um, but generally bottom bouncers are the what I'm using to achieve depth out of my spinners. Now, a lot of times early in the season, I might be just sticking a, I might be tying this on a spinner rig or a spinning rod with no bottom bouncer and I'll just put like a bullet weight up above the swivel and I'll kind of reel it around and just kind of troll it through the weed beds like that. But most of your time in your dog days of summer, most of us are probably running bottom bouncers. I like leads that are like five, six feet long. If you're fishing in a really stained system, um, you know, where your speed's gonna vary a lot and you're cutting corners and things like that, going down to like a three foot lead might be all right. And a lot of really clear bodies of water when fish are negative, we might go out to like 10 foot leads and really vary that thing up a lot. Um, but most of the time, you know, six feet long is gonna be pretty much standard operating procedure no matter where you go. And uh, the one reason I would change sometimes is like, you know, if, if I get out to like 30 feet of water, then I go to two ounces and I'm if I'm trying to get on bottom. But most of the time, if I'm running a larger spread, of lines like I am a lot and I have multiple people in my boat I like to uh, run all one ounces stick them on boards and then I know right where everything's at all the time and a lot of times you know don't think because you're running a bottom bouncer you have to be on the bottom of the lake <clears throat> very rarely am I ever actually on the bottom of the lake especially in the middle of summer today we're targeting a lot of fish that are like 22 feet down and 27 feet of water and uh, those fish are up so I'm sending out enough line to just be just above those fish it's still different than a dive curve and if you're wondering um, depths and dive curves on you know one ounce two ounce three ounce bottom bouncers just do a quick google search and you'll be able to find that information or you can just come out and play with it and it's really a pretty simple deal 99 percent of the time I'm fishing crawler harnesses or spinner rigs 1.2, 1.3, right in there. If I'm going down to like slow deaths and butterflies and, and fish seem like they're really, really negative, I might go all the way down to like 0.8 um, or 0.9 and that'll fluctuate your dive curve as well with that. So it's kind of a two-pronged approach. You know, at 1.2, which is kind of standard speed most guys are pulling spinners at, um, it'll run a certain depth. If you're going faster than that, it'll be higher in the water column. If you're going slower than that, it'll be down farther. So kind of keep those things in mind as you're setting up your spread. All right, well, I think that's gonna do it. There's, I, I feel like I could go on for an hour talking about spinner rigs, but realistically, that should give anybody who had any questions a pretty good handle on kind of what we're doing out here. The sun's going down. It's finally cooling off today, and Surly hasn't been fed. It's way past his dinner time at five o'clock, isn't it, buddy? Food? Food for Surly? Yeah, you know what that means. So we're gonna get out of here. I appreciate you guys watching this video. We'll be back on the water early tomorrow morning, send in there again, but I'm gonna go home and edit till 2 a.m. like I do most nights, and uh, appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time.